in hot pursuit of an evasive gallbladder. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy is the treatment of choice for patients with acute cholecystitis. Patients who are not eligible for immediate cholecystectomy due to medical comorbidities at the time of evaluation oftentimes undergo percutaneous cholecystostomy drainage, with the idea to then undergo cholecystectomy in the near future. However, the long-term placement of these percutaneous gallbladder drains can significantly affect quality of life due to issues related to bleeding, bile leak, and catheter dislodgement. More recently, alternative methods for gallbladder drainage have been proposed. Endoscopic ultrasound-guided transmural drainage of the gallbladder with a fully covered lumen opposing metal stent has been shown to be effective in managing acute cholecystitis in undesirable surgical candidates. The most recent version of this stent entails deployment of an electrocautery enhanced delivery system that allows effective creation of an anastomosis between the gastrointestinal tract and an adjacent cavity. Use of this stent to internalize gallbladder drainage from a pre existing percutaneous cholecystostomy tube has been described. However, use of saline injection through the cholecystostomy drain to distend the gallbladder and enhance visualization and deployment of the stent has not been reported. A 75-year-old woman with end-stage liver disease and recurrent calculus cholecystitis managed conservatively with a percutaneous cholecystostomy drain was referred for evaluation of internalization of gallbladder drainage. She was deemed not a surgical candidate due to the high risk of postoperative fulminant hepatic failure. Unfortunately, she had significant impact of her quality of life from the drain, requiring two prior evaluations for abdominal pain and catheter dislodgement. Moderate thrombocytopenia and increased INR were noted. A sinogram demonstrated patency of the cystic and common bile ducts. A non-distended gallbladder rendered secure access extremely challenging. CT scan revealed cholelithiasis and a cirrhotic liver. Despite duct patency, gallbladder drainage was necessary to prevent future calculus cholecystitis. Gastroesophageal viruses were not visualized on EGD. Therefore, endoscopic creation of a secure transluminal anastomosis between the gastrointestinal tract and the gallbladder was attempted with the idea of using the cholecystostomy tube to facilitate stent placement. The patient received intravenous antibiotics and underwent general anesthesia. A therapeutic curvilinear array echoendoscope was introduced. A satisfactory window from the duodenal bulb was achieved in which the US probe was directly adjacent to the gallbladder without venous collaterals. Copious amounts of sterile normal saline in pre-filled syringes were injected through the percutaneous drain to adequately distend the gallbladder. In order to secure safe access to the gallbladder, an anti-engaged U.S. needle was then used to puncture it from the duodenal bulb. Adequate access was confirmed by aspiration and injection of contrast. A long 0.035-inch straight soft tip guide wire was passed through the needle and three loops of wire were created within the gallbladder to allow for safe insertion of the electrocautery enhanced lumen opposing metal stent device. The U.S. needle was then exchanged for the stent over the guide wire and their fluoroscopy. The electrocautery tape was applied to access the gallbladder. However, an adequate advancement of the catheter could not be performed due to excessive looping of the wire causing significant resistance. The wire was slightly pulled back and applying 100 watts in pure cut current, the catheter was able to be advanced smoothly. The distal flange of the stent was then deployed under endosonographic guidance. The proximal flange was released inside the duodenal bulb under endoscopic view. Normal saline was injected through the percutaneous catheter and was seen endoscopically flowing through the stent into the duodenum. Further confirmation of proper stent position was demonstrated with injection of contrast through the percutaneous drain into the gallbladder, through the stent, and into the duodenum. At one week follow-up, the patient was asymptomatic 
and the percutaneous joint was successfully removed in clinic. In patients deemed unfit for cholecystectomy with percutaneous cholecystostomy tubes, Long-term use of indwelling catheters can be associated with significant morbidity. Fully covered luminoposy metal stents are being increasingly used in patients with acute cholecystitis to drain the gallbladder into the stomach or duodenum. In this video, we demonstrated how a fully covered lens can be used to internally drain a gallbladder with a patent cystic duct after long-term drainage via percutaneous cholecystostomy. Secure gallbladder access can be rendered by injection of normal saline through the percutaneous drainage, allowing gallbladder distension and a favorable position for stent access. This strategy might improve quality of life of patients unfit for surgery.